you're going to look at this more over the weekend after we get back from break. Um, but eukaryotic organisms can also be modified, and we talked. I think we talked a little bit about this in, in when you guys were freshmen. Um, they can be modified to express proteins that were beneficial to them, more beneficial to us as humans. Um, so some examples are that you can insert a gene into uh, crops, particularly corn, that kills the insect that eats them. Um, so you don't have to spray pesticides on the plants for to kill the pests that eat them. Um, this has been done in corn. So corn has been genetically modified to express a protein that when eaten by the cork borer that, that kills it, um, sorry, the corn borer, um, that eats it, it kills them. This way you don't have to spray um, the um, plant with pesticides. It's cheaper as well. Um, then they also insert genes um, that extend the growing season of crops. Um, so they've actually put a fish from a salmon um, into berries, um, and that allows them to grow in colder temperatures. It prevents them from freezing at colder temperatures and allows them to grow when they normally wouldn't. Um, we've also genetically modified crops to increase the value or the vitamins in food. Um, they've done this with rice. They've um, increased, put a gene that increases the ability of the rice to produce vitamin A, um, which it increases the nutrition of humans that eat it. Um, there are all sorts of negatives and positives to this process that you're going to look at sort of over the weekend when we get back from break. Um, so the negatives and positives of genetically and modifying foods um, that we eat. Um, Similarly, just so that we could do it, we have, and we're going to actually do this to bacteria, we have taken the green fluorescent protein, the GFP, from jellyfish, that jellyfish express, and put it into a mouse to make the poor mouse go in the dark. That's the first mice Kaiser's, first mouse Kaiser is going to get, so this mouse will never be able to reproduce and pass on that gene, because the cat's going to get the one that glows in the dark first. Um, and they've also put the gene fluorescent protein in the nose and um, feet of a pig, making them glow in the dark. Um, what we're going to do in the lab um, is we're going to take a bacteria and insert the GFP protein um, or gene um, plasma that has a GFP protein in it into the bacteria um, to make them glow in the dark. Now, one thing we'll, you'll see is that inserting um, genes into eukaryotic uh, organisms is much harder. Um, one of the reasons this is is that eukaryotic organism, organisms have a nucleus. So not only do you need to get the gene into the... Um, into the cell, but you, then you also need to get it inside the nucleus. Um, we'll see, you'll read um, over, the, over the weekend that viruses are actually used um, to, in many cases, um, to um, make um, organisms express, uh, get the, get, or to get the gene into the nucleus of eukaryotic organisms, because that's what viruses do. They inject their DNA and get it into the nucleus. Second reason why it's harder is that there are many areas of the eukaryotic genome that are not expressed. In bacteria, bacteria have most of their genes, because they're so small, are actually expressed. There are none that are permanently turned off. In eukaryotic cells, there are many, many areas of the genome that are not transcribed and translated into protein. Um, so you have to make sure you get the gene in an area of the genome that is actually expressed. Um, so those are the two reasons, and they're pretty huge barriers about why it's harder to gene genetically modify eukaryotic cells um, compared to prokaryotic cells. So to summarize, one, you have to not only do you have to get the gene into the... Um, into the cell, you also have to get it into the nucleus. And then secondly, you also have to get it into an area of the genome that is actively expressed. Otherwise, the genes themselves um, won't be transcribed and translated. So this week, we're going to spend the rest of the three days that we have looking at how we can use restriction enzymes um, to get genes that we want into plasmids and get bacteria um, to express them and then produce, turn them into protein. Um, we're going to look at this in several different ways through online simulations and then also actually physically doing it. Um, but one thing we have to talk about, which is hard, is that once you get the plasmid into the bacteria, how do you know that the bacteria has it? Um, and that's what, one thing we're going to look at, along with what restriction enzymes to use. We're also going to look at how you know the bacteria has gotten the plasmid um, once you've um, tried to transform it. Um, but I will see you guys all on Tuesday. Make sure you answer the guided questions. Have a safe and um, fun New Year's.